guess so. There was uh, someone, I don't know who, but someone once said, if you're going to get stuck in a rut in life, you might as well get stuck in the biggest rut in the world. <laughs> and we all have our reasons for getting stuck in this big rut right here. We all have our own relation to the Grand Canyon, but no one got more stuck on this rut than an any math professor named Harvey Budger. And we're going to tell you a little bit about him. We've got a lot of ground cover, so we're going to try and get this going as fast as we can here. That's my colleague Tom Myers there, who's um, also a part-time model. <laughs> This is uh, a Rich River route that Harvey named the Enfilade Point route. It's a rediscovery of his, I say rediscovery because it was founded at least a thousand years ago by pre-Columbian Indians who inhabited Grand Canyon. And this was Harvey's thing right here. He didn't like the uh, constraints of trails and so he decided many times to step to some lonesome part of the rim of Grand Canyon and find his own way to the river. He found 164 ways to the river from the rim. This is one of them. This particular one we highlight because it took him 12 years to piece it all together to rediscover this Anasazi rim to river route. And what drew us there was the fact that Harvey said in his Grand Canyon Trikes guidebooks, this place startled me. That's what he said about the red wall cliff in this route. And anybody who's familiar with Harvey's guidebooks knows that the man has a penchant for understatement. <laughs> so we decided we needed to find out what he meant by startled. This is an aerial photograph that Harvey took in the 1960s of that same route. This is the Redwall limestone, uh, at least 500 feet thick. And this was uh, Harvey's um, Spear of Mastering Grand Canyon, the Redwall limestone. And that red wall route, it went along the top here, down along here, like this, and then down. And it, it took him 11 years to finally get that crux of this route. This is the kind of thing that Harvey did. And we're going to tell you tonight about the story, not only of the exploration of Grand Canyon, but also the obsession that this man had to investigate it and explore it like it had never been done before. <laughs> so who was Harvey? Well, he was a seven foot rabbit in a movie. Um, if you want to go back to that just a second, and I want to make a point, that actually has more rel relevance to Harvey than you might know. Jimmy Stewart was the star in that movie, and he and Harvey went to the same uh, middle school in Pennsylvania. Um, Unfortunately, we can't get the clicker to work over here, so I'm going to point at Eli. He's used to it anyway, so I'm always telling him where to go. Uh, this is Harvey Butcher. Harvey Butcher was born May 10th, 1907. Happy birthday, Harvey, your 100th birthday. Hallelujah. I uh, wish you were here. He died May 29th, 2002. I don't know what I was going to about Harvey. And uh, people have been trying to describe his legacy in Grand Canyon for many years, and, and a lot of well acclaimed writers of the Southwest have done a a great job doing it, probably far better than Eli and I could have, or did. Um, oh, and by the way, the book, there is a couple of bound copies back there, so you can see it, it just doesn't have the index. Anyway, Colin Fletcher, uh, who wrote the most successful book about Grand Canyon, A Man Who Walked Through Time, he wrote Thousand Miles Summer and The Complete Walker, said this about Harvey. I set it out uh, about tracing down the experts on foot travel, and in the, in the end, I discovered that they totaled one, a math professor at Arizona State College and flight staff, and then, in 1969, Harvey spent some time with none other than Edward Abbey on the North Rim when Edward Abbey worked as a fire lookout for the Park Service. And Abbey was so impressed by Harvey, he wrote this. Harvey Butcher, in his uh, writing, he said, the man who has walked over more of Grand Canyon than any other alive or dead. But my absolute favorite, I think Eli would agree, came from none other than Flystaff's own Annette McGivney the Southwest editor of Backpacker magazine, and she said, Harvey Butcher is the undisputed king of extreme uh, obsessive hiking, and that's the fact. I think that when you read a grand session, you'll believe that's true. And by the way, his name is pronounced Butchart. When I interviewed Harvey, he, I asked him, hey, Harvey, how do you say your name? Isn't it Butcher? 
And uh, he said, no, it's butt chart. And I'm like, hmm. He said, it's Scottish. I said, well, you really want to admit that? Okay, butt chart. That's how you say it. Okay, so um, Harvey, um, here's the uh, sum numerical summary of his Grand Canyon hiking resume. He explored the Grand Canyon from 1945 to 87. 1,025 days of hiking below the rim, uh, almost three years, um, and 560 hikes, 12,000 miles covered, 82 deeps climbed, 10, 28 were first recorded ascents, 100, 179 pages of hiking logs, one uh, single uh, spaced typed. <laughs> These are huge. And then he wrote the first Grand Canyon uh, guidebooks, uh, Grand Canyon Treks 1, 2, and 3. Now this is his a visual summary of his hiking resume. This is the east half of Grand Canyon National Park, the Mathis Evans map, and all those black squiggly lines are harvests. And he, this only represents, he went all over the place. Uh, what's left out was Marble Canyon, Little Colorado, and Western Grand Canyon. The problem with the writings and the maps is that it shows you where he went. The, what we really, really wanted to know was why he went. You can't find that in his writings or on his map. So that was the challenge. Um, I worked at Grand King Clinic as a doctor full time. I still worked there intermittently, but um, I already knew about that and he knew about a project I was working on. And he had to say this about that particular project. But, uh, uh, I was probably the narrowest time, I mean, the most dangerous thing I was. There were about five different conditions, which uh, if any one of them had failed, I would have been a fatality. Me for Dr. Tom Myers. <laughs> <laughs> now that, he was talking about Faithful Journey, and no, he wasn't meet for that. Unfortunately, he didn't end up in there, but he certainly is the main course for Grand Obsession. But the challenge was, how do you, how do you uh, write a life? And that's one of the things that Eli and I faced. This is the site that I uh, encountered when I first met Tom in 2002. I'd come over to his house uh, at his request to talk about flash floods. He read a story that I'd written about that subject, and um, we came into his garage at some point, and I saw this box labeled Harvey in his garage, and I said, what's that? And he said, oh, I uh, started this biography on Harvey Butcher back in the 1990s, but it's been on, uh, it's been on the shelf literally since, uh, well, for a few years now. And uh, I became intrigued because I've, I've been a lifelong uh, hiker and Grand Canyon uh, enthusiast. And so I immediately was uh, intrigued. And the more that I started talking to Tom about it, the more we realized that we could resurrect this biography. And that's what we decided to do that day. And that was four years ago. What we uh, encountered, though, you saw the list of accomplishments that Harvey had made. Uh, his hiking logs were very detailed. There was no question about what Harvey had done and when in Grand Canyon, but missing was why, and also missing was his life story. Um, that is not in his logs. And so we asked, you know, how do we approach this story? Is it gonna be just a bunch of hiking stories? That doesn't sound terribly interesting. And as we found out, it's actually much more than hiking stories. And of course, destiny helps, as the screen says. September 11, 1901, the Grand Canyon Railroad was completed, the line from Williams to the South Rim. For the first time, it was easy to visit Grand Canyon. And the immediate response uh, was to build a first-class hotel. This was the Santa Fe Railway's reaction to the fact that all of a sudden, dignitaries, um, the wealthy, could visit Grand Canyon quickly by train, and they built the El Tovar Hotel. And after they built that in 1905, they needed to hire somebody to uh, advertise the uh, El Tovar. So they hired this man right here, who was a Flagstaff resident, Louis Benton Aiken. He was an artist, and a small studio here in Flagstaff, was given a commission by the Santa Fe Railway, and he painted the perfect advertisement for El Tovar. El Tovar Grand Canyon, and this painting was taken by Santa Fe Railway and sent all over the world to advertise the uh, big to-do. You could come and stay in comfort at the Grand Canyon. One of these, at least one, made it to China. And one of them made it into the home of Harvey Butcher, a poster of El Tovar Grand Canyon. 
Harvey was born in China in 1907. And just to give you a bit of orientation here, uh, Shanghai, Taiwan, and Hong Kong, this is uh, where Harvey's home base was, a place called Mount Lushan, mountain range in southeast China. This is Harvey's birthplace, Lu Chifu, which is today called Hefei. And Nanking right here, which is today called 